Hello, my name's Robin Vincent and welcome to Surface Sessions. Today, we're looking at the Surface Go and the Native Instruments Machine Micro Mark III as we continue our journey into working out what the Surface Go is good for. I mean, we've established so far, if you've not seen any of my previous videos, that the Surface Go is completely capable of running a half decent audio interface and some software and absolutely has the potential to be a little mini recording studio but the question is always going to be how much can it do what about my software what about what i'm doing how much of that can i do and so i am endeavoring to get around as many pieces of software as i can over time and this time it's the turn of machine or machina or however you want to pronounce it and what i want to look at is how good a combination it is to have this which is the micro machina which is an awesome little control triggery thingery thing and the surface go how well do they run together and could this become a neat little music production studio well the simple answer is yes and no it depends it depends exactly on how much of everything you need to do because as it is the machine software runs fine installs fine the machine installs fine no problems with any of that with a proper audio interface you get low latency stuff no problem with all of that however because the surface go is relatively underpowered when compared to you know most other laptops and surfaces there is a limit to what it can do and so what i hope to achieve in this little video is just to demonstrate kind of the level that it's at and hopefully that'll give you an indication of whether surface go is up to the task for what you want to do so one of the quickest ways to do that is to load up some of the demo projects and that will give you an idea of what's possible. So this one, which I think is a relatively old machine project, runs completely fine. Let's try something else. Yeah, no problem there. Now this particular project, the old CPU meter is getting quite high, but it's still sorting that out. You've got multiple drums and stuff going on, you've got sampled vocals, all sorts of bits and pieces. So randomly winding ourselves through the demo projects that come with Machine doesn't seem to be much of a problem at all, which is good news. Let's see if I can deliberately find something which is not going to be as accommodating. Oh gee whiz, they all just work. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. This one has a bit more a trouble. The old CPU meter in the machine is up to the top and you can hear in the audio the crackle, the artifacts. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nasty. And those aren't deliberate, they're not in the track, it's the the, the CPU not quite having enough power to resolve all of that audio stream going into and out of the system. And so we get glitches. So this is a good example of a project which has pushed it that little bit too far. Why? Well, if we look into the project a little bit, we should be able to see it has some samplers loaded. Those are usually fine. I mean, sample based instruments tend to be the least CPU intensive. You load a sample into memory and then it, it fires. It's really simple stuff for a computer to do. But it's the synthesizers that's the problem. It's the emulation, it's the virtual analog, it's all of that stuff that goes on within a virtual synthesizer. That's the most CPU intensive stuff your computer will probably ever have to do. And in this particular project, we've got Massive loaded up with a bunch of effects. In fact, multiple copies of Massive but largely what's letting that particular project down is effects, lots and lots of effects. Again, they can be CPU intensive and eat into your processing power. Let's try another project. See, this one is right on the edge of the processing power. 
The CPU meter is almost at the top, so it's just sort of hanging in there. So all it really needs is a few more things to trigger right then, and it's gonna glitch. And so it has. So you can see in the CPU meter over here, that it's just peaking. It's just getting to be too much. But in here, for instance, under strings, we've got uh, big choirs loaded. Under synths, we've got one, two, three, four massive synths loaded and stuff like that. So there's a lot of things going on. And so with that quick sort of random look through projects, you should be able to see that the Surface Go is completely capable of running the majority of projects. Again, depending on how big your projects are. So how big are they going to be? What actually can it let you do? Well, let's see if I can work that out for you a little bit. This isn't going to be a big review of the Machine Micro 3. I'm going to leave that for another video. I'm just using it as an example of what the Surface Go could do. So what I'll do, I'll bring you in and we'll put together a little project. I'm only using the stuff that's come with Machine. I'm not using any additional plugins. Now Machine comes with Massive, the NI synth, and it comes with Prism and Monarch, which are reactor based synths. And all three of them are really good, but neither of them are particularly light on the CPU. But let's throw a project together and see what happens. Let's load a drum kit. Create a pattern. Let's make it four bars long, just for fun. Create another group, add a pattern. Let's find a baseline to go along with it. Monarch is good. Bass. Of automation. Add another group, another pattern. Let's add something more paddy. Group number four, pattern, instrument, prism. Another group, another pattern. Let's have some massive in there. New group, new pattern. Let's keep on keeping on. One more track, I think. Let's 
So there we go, eight tracks, and I've just started hitting into uh, clipping and audio artifacts and dropouts and glitching and all that stuff. And the CPU meter here is now bouncing around, you know, three quarters full and then perhaps up into 100%. And that's it. That's all you get. So let's have a look at what we actually have loaded in here. So we've got a sample based drum kit, then a Monarch, another Monarch, a Prism, a Massive, a Massive, a Massive, and a Massive. So that's four Massives, two Monarchs and a Prism. That's quite a lot. I mean, it's an eight track song. I've got eight different sounds going on there, largely monophonic, but other stuff overlapping each other, some polyphony in there and some sample based stuff. So that is probably a good example of what the Surface Go is capable of. Now I haven't added any effects yet. And in fact, I've done projects similar to this where I haven't peaked and was able to add different effects. And so it's always gonna be dependent on which instruments you are loading and what presets you've loaded because there are so many factors involved that it's impossible to give an absolute definitive answer as to what the system will do. But I think there, what we got was a decent representation of what this is all about. And of course, if I used less intense synthesizers, other virtual instruments and bits and pieces, it doesn't have to run out of space at eight tracks. It could keep on going if I'm using much smaller synthesizers, or if I keep it all sample based, if it's all rhythm and percussion based, I can probably go on forever. But as it goes in this example, the Surface Go has become a little, you know, eight voice synthesizer, an eight voice synthesizer beat workstation groove machine. And is that enough for you? Is that enough to make this the ideal little home studio production system for you. So there you are, Machine Micro Mark III with the Machine 2 software running on the Surface Go, the eight gig model. And out of that, I got eight tracks, seven of which were synthesizers, good synthesizers, not crappy little pathetic little throwaway freebie synthesizers, no, Monarch, Prism, and massive, all of which are chunky, high quality virtual synthesizers that take a lot of juice to run well. And I've got loops going on, I've got automation going on and mixing going on and all that potential just in this little setup. And if I wanted to do a lot more tracks, well then I would just have to use different synths or different bits and pieces and other instruments, something which is, has less of an impact on the CPU. But overall, I hope I've been able to show that the Surface Go isn't a bad little thing. I mean, it's only the Surface Go. It's not a Surface Pro. If you had the Pro, you'd be able to do a ton more. But this is the little Surface Go. It's a weeny thing. It's only got a tiny little processor in there. And yet it runs desktop software like machine with proper controllers like machine to, you know, a level where you could actually sit down and get some ideas down and mess around on this without feeling too restricted. Yeah, so I reckon that's, that's all right, that is. What do you think? So coming up next in the Surface Go journey, I'm going to be taking this outside and seeing how well it runs without an audio interface and without power. Can it be that mobile? Can you use the onboard sound without it sounding either really crap or the latency being just far too high? We don't know, but we're going to find out. So my next video coming up soon, will be running Ableton Live, Bitwig and Machine on the Surface Go completely naked. Well, by which I mean no audio interface and no power. And in the meantime, the Surface Pro 6 is just about to arrive on my doorstep. And so I'll also be looking into doing videos about the audio performance of all of that as well. So loads more to come. And remember, if there's something in particular you'd like to see on the Surface Go or the Surface Pro 6, then let me know in the comments and share and like and push this about all over the place like you normally would. And if you want to be notified when I release more videos, then hit the subscribe button at the bottom. You know how this works by now. So there we go. And until next time, go and make some tunes. <laughs>